my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe. Bell notification. Give the video a thumbs up. Also, I don't know how this is going to turn out on <laughs> video. I just finished dyeing my hair and I thought I did a really good job. My hair is like naturally like wavy slash frizzy and I finally styled it and it is so patchy. I can't even like, I don't even know. How, um, I mean, I need to eventually go get it done professionally just because I've switched colors quite a few times in the last little while. So now is a good time excuse. I also just need a haircut. So I'm going to get it fixed soon. Don't worry. There's just a lot of like green and there's like full on like like belts like lines where you could like goes from like the green to like the blue that it's supposed to be <laughs> and I'm just like kind of lazy and don't have the patience um to like go in and do it myself I'll pay someone to do it so anyways um February was a kind of chaotic month um and my grandfather passed away so I had to run across the country to go to a funeral for a couple days and now with the whole like virus thing going on so I'm just trying to play catch up as much as I can and doing what I feel like doing so we're doing a well because indigos have closed across the country um until the end of March um I won't be getting anything else so we're doing a February slash March um haul accumulation of books so first off, for a dollar, because Indigo did some sale and like extra plum points and whatever, um, I got The Last Life of Prince Alistair, which is the sequel to The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, which was one of the best audiobooks I've ever, ever read. It's so freaking good, specifically the audiobook. Highly recommend it. So this is the sequel. I cannot wait to read it. 300 years ago, Fate bound Prosper Redding and Prince Alistair in the Third Realm together. Now the human boy and the fiend heir of the demon kingdom must put aside a centuries old blood feud to save everything they love. Uh, I can't wait to read this. Yeah, I got it for a dollar because it's um, 1049 plus taxes in Canada and Plum does this like all... Uh, once in a while, they'll say they'll bump you up to the next plum points bracket. So you'll get, I got bumped up to the $10 bracket when they did that. So I got $10 off and with taxes, it was like a dollar and one cent or something like that. So it was a sweet deal. I also got my pre-order copy of The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This is her new standalone. Um, I love The Daughter of the Pirate King. Duology so much. It's really pretty underneath. Uh, it's got uh, roses um, imprinted on it, and then the spine is really, 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 really pretty. Um, and the front, uh, all of the black on here is lifted. Um, it's very pretty. And black end pages. Oopsies. And I got the pre order swag, so I have her book plate. And yeah, I'm hearing nothing but just like stellar things about this book. And she is going to be. Um, in the TBR and Beyond group in April, and we're doing a group read of it. So come join us. I'm so freaking excited about this. Oh, I love Trisha Love and Seller so much. We've also discussed this on many occasions. I am a basic bitch. So, of course, I got Crescent City <laughs> by um, Sarah J. Mass. Okay, actually, I don't know. Is I keep see, I've seen it in different places different ways. Is the series called Crescent City, or is the book titled Crescent City? Because there's House of Earth and Blood, and Crescent City. What is the title name and what is the series name? If anyone can fully clarify it, because I've seen it literally listed in like official publications in different ways. So I just need help. But yeah, this is her um, adult series, which um, hit the New York Times bestsellers list. This is the end pages. It's so freaking pretty. I love this cover. Considering the basicness of the covers of Throne of Glass and the Akatar series, Trey impressed with this one. Um, and then there's just the, the, the crescent moon there and then the, the spine there. It's pretty, it's pretty basic. I shouldn't say basic. There's things with literally nothing on it, but I think compared to what some other big releases are doing, it's pretty basic, but it's also an adult one. So it's kind of got a potentially different market um, to reach to. It's also got like um, Bible-y kind of pages. I'm also trash for maps. We know how I feel about maps and books. So we have this and everyone that's reading it seems to love it. So I'm really excited to read this. This is another one. We are reading the TBR Beyond group. Sergey Mass is not going to be in the group, but um, we're doing a big group read of it because everyone got it as soon as it came out and we're all reading it. And it's a big chunker. So it's nice to like, and it's just a mass book. Everyone wants to talk to each other about it after. That's just what her books do. 
I am so happy. I'm the proud owner of the Australian covers of this series. I got my copy of The Diviners, which is book one. Whoopsies. Um, book number three, which is Before the Devil Breaks You. And book number four is The King of Crows. Now, someone did tell me before I ordered them that there are shorter ones and there are taller ones. So to watch for the ISBNs and look at the dimensions. I did do that when I was on Book Depository. I couldn't find all of them that were in the same um, height. And for a while, these two were completely out of stock and were like, we don't know if we're getting any more in. So when they finally just went on sale, I was like, I don't even care. I'm more about the covers. And actually, I kind of like both of the spines. If I could eventually get all of them in one or the other, I'll deal with that. I think probably the taller ones. But even this way, I can deal with it because I got, whew, I already have Layer of Dreams. So at least I got short, tall, short, tall. So it's a pattern. I can deal with it when it's like that too. So I have all four books now. So the weirdest thing happened when I was in Edmonton. I was there for a couple days for a symposium for work before I flew um, to start going to Quebec. Um, and I went to a used bookstore there. This was the very March 2nd. I think it was March 2nd. Um, and I found these books there for $12 a piece. They're all brand new YA releases in hardcover. <laughs> For half the price. I don't know what happened if someone read them and just like, there's nothing wrong with them. I, uh, two of them don't even look like anyone actually opened them. So whatever. I got them for $12 each. I got All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. Ink in the Blood by Kim Smedge Kahl. I've been so curious about this one for freaking so long. I'm really, really excited to read that one. And Addie Thorley's Night Spinner. Um, I have an arc of this and I've read her one other book. I did not like it. Um, however, this book is normally $29 in Canada. And bitch, no one's paying that for a hardcover. Um, I don't know why Page Street specifically is really expensive in Canada. I don't know if it's like that in the US too. They're really, really expensive. I'm not paying that, unfortunately, especially for an author that I've read only one book and I didn't really enjoy it. So I have an arc of this one. This one does seem to be getting pretty solid reviews, though, and it's... I'm taking a risk partially because it would have to kind of be problematic for me when on haul it. It's a really pretty cover. Um, but also, I just... It's, an, it's like a Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling. Like, I just... Yeah. There's nothing special or anything like that on the spines of, uh, I think, of the Night Spinner one. The Ink in the Blood is got the nice spine, but there's nothing on the front. And All the Stars and Teeth doesn't really have, this is the one that like does look kind of like used and touched. Nothing on here, but then the spine has got like a wave all over it. So it's really like, yeah, I was like, I went to the front and asked, I was like, sorry, did you accidentally like mislabel these? Do you have like a new section that you use? Like, no, people just sometimes don't want to wait. And they just give them to us. So that's the perks, I guess, of living in a city with a used bookstore. It's not shit like the one in our, our little little city. So, yeah, I got all three of these for $12 a piece instead of $29 in one case. And this one's like $25. I think Ink in the Blood was about $24, $25 too. So I got for less than half off or for less than half the price. I have been wanting to pick up this whole series and then I just saw that they're giving new covers to this series. So now I'm like frantically trying to find them all in ridiculously like reasonable prices in paperback. Um, and I found them at the same used bookstore. I was so surprised. Both of these were $6. Um, so this is The Warlock, which I think is the fifth book of the um, the Immortal, Immortal Nicholas Flamel series. And I think this is the third one. Um, sorry, The Sorceress. Oh, it says on the back. Yeah, okay. So The Sorceress is book three. I've read book one. I don't know if I've read book two because I enjoyed it and I have book one and two, um, but I want to get these original covers all because that's what I started with before they recover all of them in the old stocks all completely gone so the sorceress is book three and then this is book five yeah the warlock so i still need book four which is the neck is it necromancer does it stand in the back yes the necromancer so i have the alchemist and the magician i know i've read the alchemist i don't know that i've actually read the magician i'd have to double check but i really enjoyed it so i want to read the whole series but i want these pretty covers so i gotta watch for book four i got a super late um <laughs> christmas uh present um i think it just showed up. There was no letter or anything with it, so I'm guessing. Um, but I got a copy of The Last Spell Breather um, by Julie Pike. I just know because this was a book depository um, delivery, and this was on my um, Secret Santa, like my my Elfsy, is it Elfsy? Elfster list, and I was in a couple of those groups. Um, it's, yeah, they only have it in the UK. It's such a freaking pretty, oh, 
cover. Um, Spell Breather it does not come naturally to rain. She loathes the hours of practice, the stacks of scrolls and the snapping mud devils that cover her mother's precious spell book. But it is spell breathing that keeps her village safe from the dreaded monster curse that plagues their world. It is ancient. It is ancient, powerful magic. But as Rain learns to her horror, it is also fragile. In one clumsy move, the magic that keeps them safe is broken. Her village is plunged into danger and an incredible adventure begins. It's so pretty with the fox in the book and like, oh, it's so cute. I think this is technically a middle grade. I really want to read this one ASAP. Oh yeah, it's middle grade based on the text size. Um, yeah, it's just super cute and the UK it just gets nicer covers of everything. And lastly, to I imagine no one's surprise, I got A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayborn. This is the fifth book in the Veronica Speedwell series. Um, they just extended the contract for a sixth and a seventh book, which I am tray excited about. Um, this focuses on the White Church. Is it White Church? White Hill Church? White Church Hill? The Jack the Ripper murders. Um, that is kind of what's playing a giant uh, role in there. And of course, Veronica Speedwell's lineage plays a role because potentially someone in the royal family may have been Jack the Ripper. We don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, I read it. I read it the day it came out. I had the audiobook pre-ordered, so I just listened to the audiobook and I love this series so much. It's my most favorite series ever. So those are all the books that I managed to accumulate in the past two months. Um, I feel like I've actually, yeah, I've definitely read more than I've accumulated, which is good. And I did a bit of unhauling as well. So I'm trying to continue doing that. So I will link all of these books in the description box down below. I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back. Have a safe, wonderful, clean day and stay at home if you do not need to go outside. I don't want to hear about anyone who subscribes to me being one of those dumbasses in Florida on the beach saying, yo, if I get COVID, I get COVID, like whatever. I've been planning on partying in spring break for like two months now. So like no one can argue with that. That's the equivalent of what's that um, sports team? Um, the Washington Redskins, is it? Who were like, we can't change our mascot, man. We've been attached to that mascot for like 30 years. Do you know how deep those roots go? Like, don't be that person. Don't. If you think for any reason something you do will make you go out, end up on Philip DeFranco's news source where he just stares in, like, awe of your stupidity, don't fucking do it, okay? Stay at home if you don't need to go outside, okay? Great. See you next time.